as you can see there on day six, it's almost like it plateaus, even though they're still getting almost 20 units of pharma grade GH per day. Sub so guys, Derek, moreplatesmoredates.com. Today we're going to be talking about what HGH dose maxes out IGF-1 levels in humans. So, you know, there's a lot of speculation in terms of how much, you know, growth hormone, it's more is better. The more you can afford, the better in a bodybuilding context. And it's not the case whatsoever. And I want to detail that in this video and kind of cut to the chase in terms of what you can actually expect and where you're just further hindering your health as opposed to furthering your, you know, bodybuilding progression. So referencing the study, pharmacokinetics and metabolic effects of high dose growth hormone administration in healthy adult men, we can evaluate the IGF-1 levels in healthy adult men getting almost 20 units of pharma grade nortotropin per day, which would, you know, based on body weight, the guys in this study were um, on average, 24.4 years old, 170.2 centimeters in height and weighed 61.7 kilograms. And they were given 0.3 units per kilogram. So this yielded an 18.51 unit pharma grade, you know, nortotropin dose per day. So for a bodybuilder, this would be the equivalent of, you know, upwards of 30 to 40 units based on body weight. So getting into the study, these guys are healthy adults, you know, young adults. They're, you know, everything in terms of biomarkers is healthy, blood pressure, pulse rate, body temperature, um, everything looks good, etc. Um, 15 Japanese adult males, aged 20 to 27, were recruited into the study, divided into three groups and administered single subcutaneous injection of either 0 0.075, 0 0.15, or 0.3 units per kilogram of nortotropin. And the subjects that were assigned to receive the 0.3 units per kilogram were administered for an additional six days. So this trial for the first two cohorts is only a one day just to see what basically a fat dose of GH is going to yield in terms of uh, blood markers, but the 0 0.3 high, super high dose group was administered for a week straight. So we get a more accurate representation of what actually happens when a ridiculous, massive, massive dose is deployed over the course of several days in a row. So by the end of the week, IGF one levels had just about plateaued at 786 nanograms per milliliter. So to put this into context, I'm going to show you guys the chart here for you to reference for yourself. Um, as you can see here in the 0 0.075 unit per kilogram group, 0.15 unit per kilogram group, 0.3 unit per kilogram group. And then in that dotted line there, you can see the continuation of the IGF-1 concentrations in the 0.3 unit per kilogram group, which is roughly about um, 18 to 19 units of nortotropin per day. And as you can see there on day six, it's almost like it plateaus, even though they're still getting almost 20 units of pharma grade GH per day. So those levels peak and they plateau heavily. So we're looking at, now keep in mind, in the context of relating this to something that's relevant to you know your own personal blood markers if you've used gh before if you've used high quality gh before and had a blood test you know that you can hit nearly this high of an igf with less than half of that and the increased dose it's very apparent that there's a diminishing returns effect and it appears that there's a counter regulating mechanism in the body whereby no matter how much you end up using you're not really gonna get to, you know, a thousand nanogram IGF-1 levels. And at that point, what are you really doing? Like I can get nearly a 500 nanogram per milliliter IGF-1 on three units, which I showed in a previous video. If you haven't seen that, you can go check it out. So if you're slamming 15 more units than that three that it took to get to a 500, how much additional benefit are you really getting out of that extra 15 units that you aren't already rendering out of that first three do you know what i'm saying how much of it is just additional organ stress how much of it is actual bodybuilding outcomes so 
in terms of what I can see in the clinical data myself, it seems like potential hypertrophy outcomes, if you can even attribute a significant amount of hypertrophy from GH administration to begin with, because obviously there's a debate as to whether it actually makes a big difference on muscle accrual or if it's just a cosmetic thing at the end of the day with some additional lipolysis, where is this hypertrophy, you know, IGF-1 maxed out at? It's like six to eight IUs at most. So guys who are saying, oh, take as much as you can afford, what are you really getting out of this additional, you know, 10 IUs plus? You're just cranking your blood glucose up and making yourself insulin resistant quicker and stressing your organs and wasting your money <laughs> quite, by quite a bit. So, you know, I'm going to show you, I'm going to put the name of the study in the video description below if you want to check it out yourself. But, you know, more or less, what you can get from this is that there is definitely a counter-regulating mechanism at play here. And it's like what you can take away from this data is the saturation point. There's a saturation point when it comes to growth hormone. And it seems to be somewhere in the 700 to 800 nanogram per milliliter range, which suggests that endocrine levels of IGF-1 do have a ceiling and the dose response is not just that they, you know, go sky high. It's not like you can just, you know, each unit equals another, you know, like 100 nanograms or something like that. There's a blatant level of your body cutting things off regardless of the dose administ administered. Like the exact mechanisms are not known at this time, but it's likely the result of a bunch of feedback loops, much like myostatin for, you know, um, regulating, uh, when androgen levels get to super physiological levels, inhibiting further muscle growth by increasing myostatin. Perhaps it's a mechanism like that. We don't really know, but at the end of the day, it's pretty obvious that there's something limiting the amount of IGF one you can actually convert into in the body and make use of, because if you're pinning four units and you get, you know, like a 500 plus nanogram per milliliter IGF one level, or if you shoot, you know, six IUs, and you get up to, you know, 700 plus, you can take another 10 to 15 on top of that and make no difference in your IGF-1 level. So if we're, you know, for those who even feel strongly that elevating IGF-1 is conducive to hypertrophy outcomes to begin with, you should be keeping this in mind because it doesn't seem like there's like, obviously, there's the camp of guys that think, oh, you know, it's like gear, HGH, insulin. Those are like all the things that you need to be massive. And it's like, even if you believe that, you should definitely take this into consideration here because there's a lot of guys that are probably just, you know, wrecking their systems unnecessarily to yield no additional benefit. So um, as far as a hypothetical hypertrophy context, I don't see any benefit above probably like six to eight units of pharma. And then as far as, you know, even getting into... You know, people are going to say, well, what about lipolysis? What about fat loss? That's like a lot of the main, one of the main reasons why people use it is to get this, you know, insane fat burning effect out of it. And it's like, first of all, if you've used GH, I think you know well that it's not the best fat burner. There are more effective fat burners out there that actually make a way more significant difference. So if you're using it solely as a fat burner, it's not very good for that. There are things that are far more effective for that purpose, but not everyone wants to take those. And some people think GH is more, you know, effective for X reason or X reason. But it's like, at the end of the day, even when you look at the clinical data on lipolysis, it's also limited in the fact that it doesn't seem like you can get much additional fat loss out of more than a couple units a couple times a day at most. As far as where lipolysis is maxed out, I covered this in another, in another video. Um, I believe it was the Eric Konevsky cycle review, review where I basically went over his uh, contest prep stack or whatever. And the corresponding article I posted to go along with that video. But uh, in a real life practical application, it's like, maybe like one to 1.5 units for a hundred kilogram athlete is where lipolysis is maxed out. And then anything above and beyond that, there's mechanisms in the body to inhibit that as well. Very similar to myostatin, perhaps very similar to the IGF-1, maybe the same mechanism for the IGF-1 inhibition. I don't really know, but there's a diminishing returns effect with everything here. They have to keep in mind. And for GH in particular, for hypertrophy outcomes, it's not nearly as high as guys think. And for lipolysis, it's way lower than a lot of guys think. 
And most of them are administering it completely incorrectly to begin with. Like the most lipolysis you can yield out of it is maybe one and a half units. And even once you've done that, you have to wait for your cells to resensitize in the environment to be able to induce that lipolytic effect again. Like the pulsatile nature of a human endogenous growth hormone, the cells expect a period of inactivity after each secretion of growth hormone. So there's a mechanism in place to prevent cell activity after each pulse. So just because you're slamming your body with you know four units at once, it doesn't mean you can process it all at the same time. There's mechanisms in place to prevent this. So I'm going to post uh, the graphs I showed in that video just really quickly to show you guys exactly what I'm talking about. But basically repeated administration of exogenous GH leads to inhibited cell sensitivity once you go above and beyond where your body can process. And muscle cells in particular have shown to have a refractory period of at least two hours before partial sensitivity is recovered. And it's closer to six to eight hours for full sensitivity to recover in muscle cells. So in terms of what you're really getting out of slamming your body with a ton of GH, it's it's probably overhyped and probably a waste of money and probably just hindering your insulin resistance and wrecking your organs more for no significant benefit. This is all hypothetical, of course, based on just what I am extrapolating out of this study here and based on my own personal blood work and on the other clinical data I've referenced. But like if you're pinning multiple shots of GH or fat dosages, you know, multiple times a day. I don't think you're really inducing extra fat loss. I think you're just pushing your trying to create more IGF-1 unnecessarily when you're you also have a down -reg, a mechanism in place to prevent that from even working properly. So, you know, regardless of how you look at it, using excessive amounts of GH is going to lead to a blunted outcome in terms of what you're trying to achieve and just, you know, further exacerbate potential side effects. At least that's that's how I see it. So it seems like, like I mentioned, the ceiling on um, IGF-1 levels at mega doses of GH looks to be around, you know, 700 to 800 nanogram area. So, you know, take from that what you will. Thank you guys for watching. Please like, subscribe, drop a comment. Helps the algorithm. Much appreciated when you guys do that. Follow me on Instagram at marpoise underscore mardates, Facebook, Twitter, Snapchat, podcast link, video description below. The five star ratings actually help the algorithm. So it's appreciated when you guys post those. As well, the newsletter link in the video description below if you actually want to get an organized you know, copy of the articles when they get published. They're always far more pro professional than these like off-the-cuff videos where I'm like 90% of the time don't have any kind of notes to go off of or anything. And I basically just organize my thoughts into you know a very concise and organized way with table of contents all the clinical studies are referenced accordingly so you guys can go see those whereas obviously in the video you know when i say something it's not like a study pops up that you can go the typer link you can go click on so good benefit to you know being on the list for the uh articles so if you want to join the mailing list link in the description thank you guys for watching talk to you soon